Now joining us with reaction from the opposition benches, we welcome Vic Fideli. He's the PC finance critic and the MPP for Nipissing. And John Vantoff, the NDP finance critic and the MPP for Temiskaming Cochrane. Good to have a couple of Northern Ontario boys on the program tonight. Okay, you know Charles Sousa's headline is balanced budget, pharmacare to boot. What's your headline? Well, my headline and my kicker would be uh, liberals announce fake budget balance. The kicker would be uh, use their bully pulpit to purposely deceive the public. How unparliamentary <laughs> of you, Mr. Fidelli. I don't think you could get away with that in the House, but no, on, I couldn't. on TVO it's probably okay. Okay, John Vanthoff, what do you say? When liberals continue to fail, continue to fail to realize the struggle of Ontario's families. Okay, let's pursue this a little bit more. You were quite adamant in the lockup yeah. at Queen's Park today that uh, while the minister thinks he's presented a balanced budget, you don't think he has. Make the case. I wasn't kidding when I say they're purposely deceiving the public. I brought to the uh, lockup uh, uh, scrum afterwards the both the Bill 144 and 172, the, the hydro bill and the cap and trade bill, and showed the one line that they put in these massive documents, one single line that said they're allowed to use their uh, revenue from cap and trade and from... Uh, uh, the sale of Hydro One, to reimburse themselves for monies already spent. That's billions and, of dollars, right? This is, it's $4 billion mm -hmm. between the two of them. That was the aha moment uh, uh, for, for me in looking through the uh, what documents. What does that mean? What do you mean it's the aha moment? Because it says what? That's what they were doing. What they will do then is take the money from the sale, from the sale of Hydro One, uh, apply it, as they uh, say, for infrastructure programs, mm -hmm but then take the money that was already budgeted for the infrastructure program, pull that out to balance the budget with this false balance. That, so there's four billion of it, and there's additional money. They're using, for instance, the uh, teacher's pension fund, uh, about a half a billion dollars of surplus there. They're not rating it, but they're using that uh, asset to uh, list it in their books to help balance. Which so the auditor has said, the auditor has said really you cannot do. do that. So that's about $5 billion altogether when you add it up. There's about a $5 billion hole in the budget. So your earlier intro to the show described with it what a deficit is. You said it's when you spend more money than you're taking in. And that's what they're doing. They've, they've ginned it up by using one-time money. That, you know, you're not going to sell the OPG headquarters or the LCBO headquarters again, which they've also sold and used that money to, mm -hmm. to top up the $5 billion. Okay, that's the view from the Conservative side of the ledger. The New Democrat side of the ledger and the focus of your concern would be what? Oh, they, they're saying that they're helping Ontario families. And one, one really good example is the operating budgets for hospitals. The booster shot, $500 million and change, 3%. Right. 2% is inflation. 1% is covered by population growth. They have been frozen for years. We've got people in hallways. You know, obviously the hospitals are in crisis. This is steady state. This isn't, this isn't a booster shot. They're barely keeping up with inflation. So they're portraying it as a significant infusion yes. of new money, but... But it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. There, there were going to be just as many people in hallways and just as many cancel surgeries as there was before. Vic Fidelli, let me come back to you on this balanced budget issue. You know, for Mr. and Mrs. Everyday Ontario, as far as they're concerned, whether the province is running an operational balance or whether they balance by selling some assets on a one-time occasion, does that really matter at the end of the day? The Auditor General describes it best by not balancing properly and by continuing to add to the debt, which they're doing this year, another $9 billion. She said in the 2014 budget and in the 2015 budget, you're beginning to crowd out the services that people in Ontario rely on. That's why we saw cataract surgeries cancelled. That's why we saw uh, uh, test strips for diabetes cancelled. You know, in my hometown of North Bay, which I like to talk about often in the legislature, we've had now almost five, uh, almost 400, I should say, uh, frontline health care workers fired in the last five years, including 100 nurses. And in that hospital, which is only six or seven years old now, we have 60 beds closed. Do you That's think, the crowding out she's talking do about. Do you think with this so-called booster shot that any of those people will be brought back to work? No, uh, the, the, you know, that, that, that's going to be impossible in this case. They still have a... The, the, last week they let 38 more people go just to try to balance last year's budget. So you're talking about $500 million dollars uh, spread over uh, 444 communities in Ontario. Uh, primarily, uh, money will come here in Toronto. Uh, it, it's just really uh, 
tough to know that this is not the answer. One more quick point. They took $107 million away from the hospital last year in the Ontario Lottery Corporation money as well that won't be back this year. John Vantoff, I want to ask you about uh, what they consider the signature plan of this budget, which is this OHIP Plus, they're calling it, you know, a new pharmacare program. OHIP Light. <laughs> okay, you're calling it OHIP Light. Well, I did want to ask about that because, of course, at your convention last week, the NDP unveiled its own pharmacare program, which is intended, yes. obviously, to be more universal and not yes. uh, contingent on how old you are. Okay, but did they steal some of your thunder by doing this? No, no. I think uh, we're, this, is a, this is a welcome change. You know, uh, people under 24, kids and young adults and students, this is, this is a good idea. Is it... Is it the answer? No. If you're, if you're a young mother with two kids and you need the prescriptions, you still have to take out the credit card. This is not what universal health care should be. And, and we, we push very hard for this program. And it's what we have a hard time with is every time we have to drag the liberals kicking and screaming to actually do the right thing and although they kick and scream they still don't get it right well let me do the follow-up here because they would say that their plan while it covers fewer people right because only young yes. people it covers far more medications than yours would it's costed better and it'll get up to speed sooner that's their claim well, can first, you address that first of all it'll get up to speed sooner because Right now, they're the government. But their question about their, their contention that it's costed better, the Pharmacare light was in the budget speech, but it's not in the budget. That is true, actually. <laughs> you know, no one knows if it's costed at all. So, and on the first point, if you cover more people, if you cover all Ontarians for essential medicines, right, you, have, you get a bigger bang for your buck, you also have better negotiating power to bring the cost of those medicines down. It's actually way better for the economy because you'll free up some people who do have benefits, you'll free up some of that money to actually go to other things. Vic Fidelli, i got to follow up with you because we now know where the Liberals are at. You call it OHIP light, but it's, they're calling it OHIP plus. We know what your plan is uh, for the NDP, a universal program. May cover fewer medications, but okay, there you go. We don't have anything from the PC party yet. So what have you got to say on this? Uh, two things on this. First of all, you will go into the election, which is in one year, one month, and ten days from now. Not that you're counting. Not that we're counting. Knowing our policy from end to end. Our, oh. our leader, Patrick Brown, is having the largest policy convention in November. So uh, that's when our grassroots will be uh, announcing our policy. So you'll be hearing a lot more about it then. This particular plan... It's really Okay, hang on. Before you go there, though, i got to find out more about yours, which is to say, okay, I understand you've got a policy process in yep. place. You want to hear from the grassroots before you commit to specifics. Yep. Having said that, can you commit tonight, as the finance critic for the party, that you will have some pharmacare program to match the other two parties by the time the next election comes around? Oh, I think our leader was pretty clear in the scrum today that we'll, we'll, not only will, will we be addressing all of the areas of health care, but you're going to know absolutely every detail with enough time to go into the election, being able to ha carefully choose the PC party. So that's a yes to a pharmacare plan of some kind <laughs> next time. That's a yes to a health care plan that you're going to know every detail about. So that's not a yes to pharmacare. Okay, I'm That's just... a yes to a health care plan. All right, I got you. I don't want to uh, upstage our grassroots members who have been uh, working very hard. Gotcha. But on this particular on plan, this one, yes. it is tough to see uh, uh, this plan which, as John so rightly pointed out, is not in the budget. If you look in this budget document, no, you will no not find it. it. There's that's true. Not only no number, there's no mention of it. <laughs> there's no mention. <laughs> it is not in the budget plan. This, speech. this is brand book, new. Right. So it's in the speech. Yeah. Uh, you know, only a week or so uh, ago, uh, we outed the, the uh, Liberals uh, that they're polling from Gandalf uh, polling, which is David Hurley, which is the Premier's uh, uh, campaign uh, chief. Mm -hmm. um, he uh, was polling to see what kind of reaction they'd have if they cut back on OHIP. To me, this is a real knee-jerk reaction. That, oh my gosh, we were outed, we got caught trying to uh, you know, save a few dollars on it, and they've just swung the pendulum the other way. That's quite plausible. So John, let me make sure I understand this. The, the OHIP Plus is not in the actual budget. Nope. It's in the very thin budget speech. Do you think they sort of saw what you had at the convention hey, and panicked I, and added it? I, I will let people make their own, <laughs> their own conclusions. It's a uh, small book, the numbers. Gotcha. Okay, let's move on to housing. Uh, Vic Fideli, uh, 
you know, they've taken some pretty strong positions on, for example, rent controls on every property now in the province as opposed to just stuff pre-1991. Uh, they say that in exchange, because that obviously not going to do anything for supply, in exchange they're taking off some regulations, they're going to cut some red tape, they're going to cut some fees, development charges, uh, which will encourage landlords to build and developers to build. How do you think it's going to work out in the wash? Well, I think they bungled this uh, as well as bungling many of the other things, including hydro and uh, health care. Uh, in this particular case, they mused out loud weeks ago what they were talking about doing, and so uh, landlords raised rents. Uh, so it's, it's had the opposite effect. Just their, their, the way they began approaching it had the opposite effect. And then uh, the fact, again, that they mused out loud about doing it uh, developers uh, already, it put a chill on the development. There are developers who have cancelled apartment mm -hmm. and, and rental projects. Do you know and, that for a fact? Oh, absolutely for right. a fact. Uh, we met with, on the other side of it, on the supply side of it, we met with developers who told us the red tape and the regulations that this government has put on is strangling development. They told us that uh, under the small, uh, Strong uh, Communities Act 2011, uh, it now is uh, 17 months in Toronto for a set of approvals, 19 months in Ajax. Uh, Ajax. One of the developers said, from the time you're driving down a street and thinking this would make a beautiful subdivision to the day you flush the first toilet in a house, mm. 16 years in, in this area, in the GTA, mm. up to 20 years. So they've, mm. they've really, uh, by strangling uh, uh, red tape and, and regulation, they've really uh, put a chill on the building. Having said that, if you're a tenant who's in, You've now got protection you didn't have yesterday. Yes. You happy about that, John? Um, we've been pushing rent control for a long time. Uh, lately, uh, my colleague Peter Tabbins put a bill forward. And uh, once again, uh, you have to drag the Liberals kicking and screaming. But they've been in power for 14 years. And this issue didn't happen yesterday. And one thing I'd like to mention that a lot of people don't think about, one of the reasons that people are moving, and it's a great place to live, but if you look at the rest of Ontario, they're cutting services. They're cutting, if you look at this budget, they cut MNR, they cut MNDM, they cut... Hang on, hang on, acronyms here. Uh, <laughs> Ministry <laughs> of Natural Resources and Forestry, uh, Minister of Development Mines, Mines yeah. Ontario Minister of Agriculture and Food. Mm -hmm. They cut all these and they cut services in rural Ontario. They're driving people out of rural Ontario. People should move. If you, if you could get internet service in rural Ontario, you could run an internet business out of rural Ontario. That, and that's, it might not be a big factor, but it is a factor. They're concentrating so much on the middle that, that they have totally forgotten about the outskirts. Do you think it's... I'm not ascribing motive here, but I'll ask you. Do you think it's because they don't hold any of those seats? I, I think they don't understand rural Ontario. And, and after reading this budget, I question whether they care. They, 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 they've, they've changed the delivery rates for hydro and they just, OK, you've got enough now, be quiet. <laughs> and <laughs> and, and I, that, I, I find it... No one's talked about this, but for rural Ontario, the outskirts, it's insulting. Another one, Ontario Northland Transportation Commission isn't even mentioned. Another one, a, a big, used to be a big economic developer for Northern Ontario. A big, when I got elected and Vic got elected, ring of fire, they were going to build the smelter in Cape Royal. Mm -hmm. I remember that when I got elected. You know, thousands of jobs. Mm -hmm. This time... It's not even mentioned, not even cut and paste. They finally thrown the water on the ring of fire. It's, it's dead. They actually used to have, they, they earmarked a billion dollars in every budget for yeah. the last few years for the ring of fire. I didn't see it this year. 2014 it was in. They cut and pasted, put it in 2015, took the same words, put it in 2016. It is not in the budget anywhere. They've given up on the ring of fire. It was a billion dollars. It's gone from the budget. It wasn't in the speech. It's not in the book. And they took $70 million, that's almost 10%, away from the Ministry of Northern Development and Mines. They really have, these, the interviews that we both did up north, uh, we both just uh, could not believe. I'm ashamed of this government for yeah. doing that. A couple of minutes to go here, and I want to ask, uh, John, on a couple of issues. I mean, you could say that PharmaCare is one of them. You could say on rent controls was another one. You say you've had to drag them kicking and screaming to adopt positions that are similar to yours. But the fact is, they have. And I wonder now whether or not they've just made your political life a little more difficult by adopting positions that you are somewhat in you know, with. I, I think our job, our job, we're all, like, elections coming up. When we're running, everyone's trying to win so we can actually change for a better thing. But if, if anything we do makes life better for Ontarians, I think we've already, we've succeeded. 
I think I think people should vote NDP so we actually don't have to drag kicking screaming and we actually do progressive things that help people. But if whatever we do, the pressure we put, if it changes things, it it's it's our it's opposition's job not only to oppose, but to propose. Let me find out from Vic Fideli whether he thinks it's also a good idea to vote NDP to bring a more progressive <laughs> government to. What do you say to that, Vic? Well, I think John knows where I sit on that. <laughs> you know, I, but, I, but I'll ask you the same question from a different point of view, obviously, which is, okay, you think it's a shell game. You don't think they've really balanced yeah. the budget. But, um, you know, pretty much every newspaper in Ontario tomorrow is going to say budget imbalance. And then in the fine print details, they'll quote you saying, not really. Uh, you know, the politics of this may be irresistible. How do you deal with that? Well, it's tough. I mean, you've got, uh, you've got a sitting government. That's why I say they use a bully pulpit. It's the sitting government is saying we're balanced. I'm quite certain that the financial uh, accountability officer who came out a half a year ago and said they're not going to balance, they're going to use one-time revenue, pretty sure the auditor general who said they can't use that money, I'm pretty sure the other legislative officers are going to agree, mm -hmm. but they're using a bully pur a pulpit to uh, absolutely purposely deceive the people of Ontario. Again, unparliamentary language, which you'd never get away with in the House, but again, we're just on television here, here, so what the heck. Uh, I want to thank Vic Fidelli and John Vantoff for coming into TVO tonight and helping us out with our budget coverage. Look at that handshake to finish things off. Isn't that nice? <laughs> okay. Pals. Thanks, gentlemen. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.